Hey everyone, thank you so, so, so much for clicking on this video. It really does mean the world to me. Today is incredibly exciting as we are going to be interviewing Hazen Ordell from, of course, National Geographic's very own Primal Survivor. And you can, in fact, watch that on Disney Plus right now. So guys, before we jump into this interview, I just want to let you know this was recorded about a month ago during load shedding, so I wasn't in my usual set, which actually doesn't even exist right now because my wife has just moved in with me, so we're busy rearranging everything. But guys, I really hope you enjoy this interview. I had a lot of fun. He's a great guy. And if you haven't yet, please check out Disney Plus so that you can watch Primal Survivor. Thank you so much for joining me. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you. I was only given access to one of your episodes, but it was like, a, yeah. Unfortunately, that's the case, but I think it's geolocked and that's, that's the case. That's what happens when you're here in South Africa. But I have to say, I loved it. It had everything I enjoy in, in a series. But I have to ask, and I'm assuming you get asked this question all the time, why do you do what you do? Well, to me, that's, why would you not do what I do? But um, I think it just comes from, ever since my very first memories, I've just loved nature. I mean, everybody around me that was my age was was catching bugs and putting them in bug boxes and, you know, cruising around the swamp and trying to look for frogs and stuff. And but then I don't know, it was, it was as I as I grew up as a kid, I started to realize that they stopped doing all that stuff and they were probably doing normal people things like uh, watching sports and chasing girls and stuff. And I still, all I wanted to do was just be in the swamp and go keep catching cad, tadpoles and newts and frogs and all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, so I never grew up, I guess. And so I just maintained that fascination for my entire life. And it's um, it's been quite an amazing path because I've just kind of spent my life doing what I want to do. And what I want to do is be with animals. I will say, honestly, wild animals. And it was... Uh, I'm the first person in my entire lineage to have gone to college or, or university, and I, I knew that I wanted to be a biologist of some kind, and especially wanted to be a tropical biologist and be working with tropical fish and stuff. All the kinds of things that I had in my aquariums as a kid, you know, I had frogs and terrariums and snakes and all these fish from all over the world, and that's just all I cared about. That's all I read about. That's all I thought about, and I. Um, so, you know, I went to college to be a biologist. I knew that for me to do what I wanted to do is probably going to be 10 years of my life. Um, but I, once I got into school, I wasn't learning about anacondas. I wasn't learning about emerald tree boas. I wasn't learning about all the cool things that I really wanted to learn about. It was like dumb stuff like the Krebs cycle and like, like you know, organic chemistry. And I, so I dropped out, I will say. And I, at that time, I was 19 years old. Um, and I thought, okay, well, if I'm really going to spend the, be spending this much time in school, I better go to the heart of where I really want to spend my life, and that's in in the rainforest. So, I uh, at that time I was mowing lawns door to door. I had a tea kettle full of money. I had enough to buy a plane ticket. I had all the camp, all the hand-me-down camping gear that I had from camping and going outside when I was in high school. I brought it with me, and seriously, I was so incredibly naive and innocent. Uh, I went there to just go to his to the very end of the road, as far as I could see, to a very wild place, and then go camping. And I thought I'd be there for you know a couple weeks or something. And um, and during that time, yeah, I I learned the hard way that when it rains all night long, you're going to be sleeping, you're going to wake up in a lake uh, and stuff like that. And but I was very shy before I went there. A lot of people thought that, you know, I was going to get kidnapped. I was going to get killed. I was doing all these sort of things. So I was just kind of hiding out. But I was, of course, found because I was in a very remote place. The only people that were around were indigenous people. And they, after a few weeks of living in a tent, they were kind of wondering what I was doing. And I got to know them. Uh, mostly got to know the, know the kids, know the little kids around the, that were fishing and stuff. And and I was looking to see what they were fishing for, and and uh, we became friends, and then they told their parents, and pretty soon, I was kind of invited into their parents' house, even though I didn't even speak the language, but it was kind of like, better come in, in with us, and we'll see what you're about, and then they soon realized I was just a naive 19-year-old kid that's going to die in the jungle, so they, 
they they asked me to go live with them and pretty soon that 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 little trip that I thought would be that just for a couple of weeks wound up being 8 months and I had learned the language by then I was I was for the first time in my life was with a group of people that knew everything about the nature it knew how to fish knew where all the snakes are that I wanted to see they were my people right and I had never known people that knew all the names of the different kinds of plants and knew how to use them and how to use them for different parts of their house and it was like wow this is amazing this is way better than school and uh i spent eight months there and then i did have to go back because my grades weren't that good i was going to get kicked out of school if i didn't go back to school and i the 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 very day that the school went out that next summer i was back in ecuador and then that became my life for the next 10 years spending about half the year with the with that group and that community with the the Quechua and the Warani tribes that were there. And um, and then that just, again, was like, yeah, I'm living my dream. I'm with people now. Before I thought it was all about animals. Then it became more about the animals and the people that know how to live with all the animals and living in these wild places. And I was learning so much. I was also learning that everything that I knew was nothing compared to what it would take for lifetimes of spending time in these environments. So I wound up uh, finishing college and then went down to the track of academia and like getting my master's degree and stuff in biology and ecology. And then I was going traveling to Southeast Asia and remote South Pacific. And it was like, it's all I thought about. Again, I was fixated on going to the, to these corners of the world where indigenous people are still practicing traditionally and they're still living alongside these amazing coral reefs with the amazing diversity of fish. And if it was in the desert, you know, like South Africa and stuff, I always wanted to be with people that didn't just see game as like something to hunt, but they knew the behavior. They knew how they found, they knew everything there was to know about these animals. And the only way to do that is to be on the ground and be with the local people, especially the indigenous people or traditional living people. So yeah, I've dedicated my life to doing that. And it's really only been fairly recently in the last few years that somebody caught wind of really what I do. And that was National Geographic. And they said, hey, you know, we'd like to maybe see if we could record a little bit about how you look at the world. And I can't believe it, but I don't, we were just counting. We may have uh, 50 some episodes of Primal Survivor now. That means 50 different places around the world highlighting 50 different cultures that I think would have would just be would would have just disappeared from people's awareness if we weren't making this program. So long story short, how did I get myself into it? I followed my heart. I love nature and I'm doing it every day and I can't be any happier. That's incredible. So I'm just seeing an incredible variety of circumstances that keep leading you from one place to another, from one location to another. And going along that theme and the episode I was um you know, allowed to watch, you found yourself on top of a tree trying to get honey, surrounded by these bees. And I have to say, that was probably like, honestly, one of the most terrifying things I've seen in quite a while. Because I've been in that situation before and it is scary. So I've got to ask you, like, that seems like it's something you face like on a regular basis. So what would you say is the scariest situation you found yourself in while filming your series? Well, I wouldn't say a lot of things are, are scary. But I am, we are in the wildest places still left on earth. So when you're in those kind of environments, you can plan all you want, but your plans are going to change rapidly. And so you really have to roll with the punches. I don't, um, I, I do care very much about my life. I don't think I'm, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I acknowledge that and I respect my life. But what I do is rather than being fearful, I'm not scared because a lot of these things I've, I have a, a bit of an awareness about, like I'm not terrified of snakes, rather I've turned that energy into my fascination. A snake is yet another creature that maybe I haven't seen ever before in my life. I wanna know more about it, but I know enough about all the different kinds of snakes in the world to know, you know, that's potentially very venomous or it's potentially very benign or, you know, and I, I take my precautions, but I'm there to really experience it and get to know it. Um, the scariest things that happen are the things that you just simply can't ever explain. You know, there's been places in South Africa where we we were at a we're hiding in bushes, hunting with the sand bushman, and 
and a herd of elephants comes and is on our way to trampling us to death. That stuff's not planned. But here on this certain expedition, it was like that too. No one would ever know that we'd set up camp. It had been raining for days. Uh, it was pretty swampy when we went to bed. And when we woke up, there's two feet of water everywhere. And there's, not, there's no lights. It's in the middle of the night. The water's still rising. And uh, there's no road. We hiked in from miles away. And uh, there's no place to go. Is it going to get deeper? You know, those sort of things are really scary. And, you know, everything's getting rained on. Uh, a lot of cameras died during our expedition. And, uh, but, you know, like I said, you just got to kind of got to roll with the punches. Things that are really scary are um, getting infections that start to get out of control. And you wonder how bad they're going to get. You know, how are you going to try to plan to get enough rest to be able to hopefully see if there's any, uh, if, if any of the infections are getting better? Sometimes that doesn't happen. I'm more scared of those sort of things, you know? So just for my final question and the amount of time we've been allotted. So you've been to a ton of different places, but I want to know, there has to be a place you haven't been to yet. So which place are you wanting to travel to next and want to explore that you haven't been able to yet? I'll give you two. Okay. One is uh, the Congo. That seems so wild to me. So I've always wanted to go there. Um, and believe it, I've never been to Brazil. And Brazil's so huge. And uh, there's, um, there's some amazing country, lots of different landscapes. Um, as far as wild places in this world, those are two places that I really want to go. Perfect. Well, thank you so, so, so much for spending some time with me. I know how busy you are, and I really do appreciate you taking time out of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Enjoy Take the rest care. of your day. And today we're going to be talking about a series that is actually very, very, very close to my heart. And I'm, of course, talking about Uma Lucy. So there might be some of you out there that are going, why is this guy talking about this series being close to his heart? And that is because I actually helped edit this series. You can see my name is right there in the credits. And I'm actually incredibly, incredibly proud of that. And I'm proud of what this series has become.